Welcome back to another tutorial today. Um, I think this time we're going to cover something that's slightly more complicated eh, in some ways. Sort of a multi-step process. Um, since I already covered making your specular maps for Fallout 4, we're going to go over sort of the rest of the texturing process. Uh, I am sort of assuming for this that you are able to navigate Blender and GIMP without too much trouble. Um, but I will mention a couple of the controls that I'm using as we go. So I've loaded up uh, the New Vegas Light Machine Gun mod that I've been working on. Now, I haven't done any UV or texture work on this yet, so it's a, it's a perfect one to show off. And to start off, we're going to have to build a UV map. So let's split this view. And we're going to make sure this side is UV Editor. And we're going to need to go into edit mode. So I'm going to start off by just moving all this junk out of the way. This is a sort of auto-generated UV that we're not going to use. Some of that we're going to fix. Um, it's not going to be super complicated. Um, but some of that we're just not going to use at all. So to start off, I'm going to select some of the bigger sections of this. And to make that a little bit easier before I get going, I'm actually going to apply my edge split. So if you know what edge split is, it sort of helps smooth out the sections where faces come together. Um, but it will also make so that my UVs are easier to place because it's going to break up my model into sections that are not technically attached. So I usually wait to do this until the last minute but it's very helpful when you're building a UV, so I'm going to do it right now. That should enable me to face select and just use the additive select to get things. So maybe let's start down here. Yep, and that gets almost everything that I want. We'll just add those three on there. Now we're also going to add this section in the middle. Now, when you're building a UV by hand, which is something that you're probably going to need to do if you're making your textures by hand, because you're going to need to proportion them properly and arrange them a little bit differently to make things easier on yourself. Um, what I'm going to end up using a lot of the time is this sort of overlapping UV method. So I'm going to go back here and also select this side. and all of this little stuff in between. And what this will do for me is when I actually go generate the UV, these two faces will be overlapping if I want them to. <coughs> that looks okay. So I'm gonna set this to a view where I can see that head on. And then I'm going to, instead of just hitting unwrap, which is your auto uh, UV unwrapping, I'm going to use project from view. So it's going to overlap all of that onto this chunk. I'm going to rotate that 180 so it's the right side up. And for now, I'm just going to set that to the side. So any objects, any parts of an object that you're okay with having the same section on opposite sides, you can just use this project from view method um, and it will overlap them exactly where you're looking. Um, in the past I've also used this for like curved surfaces so that I can adjust them in specific ways. I might show you that with a barrel um, before we actually move on to the texturing process. Um, but if you do want these to have separate textures, you can still separate them over here um, by just selecting one part of it and hitting Control L. That will let me select that UV island and move it out from the group. But I'm just going to leave those overlapping for now, so I'm going to undo and we'll just leave it at like that. So I'm going to real quick, I'm going to break out sort of the big chunks. I'm going to be using that method a couple of more times, but we're just going to get the larger pieces of this ready to go. Um, and then we'll jump into how you're going to use this to get your textures built in GIMP.
Now this part I'm going to do a little bit differently. You'll notice that everything I have selected here is technically just in one long sequence. This might have been a good thing to, to do before I did edge split because if I use the auto UV it will actually just link all of these in one long chain um, that will make it really easy to set up. Now it should still work out fairly well. I'm just going to have a couple of faces like this chunk and this chunk that I'm going to have to attach manually but that's not a huge deal. So let's try auto unwrap. Yep, that worked fairly well. It even connected those into a slightly larger chunk than I was expecting. So that will be good. So we can grab this. Move it over here. We'll make it a little bit smaller. And then we just have to attach these. If I can get the right things. Let's use this instead. There we go. So I'll grab that and get it out of the overlapping section there. Why does that look like I have something overlapping? That's a little weird. And then I'm just going to sort of stitch these back together. So I'm going to select over here and I have it set so it's matching up sort of which one's where. Uh, that's this button right here. So this is sort of your normal setting where if I select something here that's all it shows. And then if I activate this it will show the selection on both of them and it will show my entire UV at once. Um, so this is that side, and then I'm going to find this, and this little piece in between. Okay. So triangulating can actually be useful in this uh, sense because it helps you figure out the orientation of things. Um, but I can figure it out just by looking at this because I know that should, arrangement should be in a certain direction. Okay. So that's going to be my front. This has come around to that side. So this is going to have to attach oh, the other way. Here. And then this is going to have to attach here. All right. And then at the other end, I mean on the other side of this over there. We can select these. This one needs to be rotated 180. And then we'll hook these up at the other side. Maybe. There we go. This will need to be rotated 90. So I'm just going to scale these and then stitch them together. So they come close to lining up without too much distortion. And I might not even do the bottom right here because I'm just showing you a process, but that's something that I would definitely want to go back and do if I was going to use this layout. Okay, so here I'm going to select and I'm just going to do hit M and merge. I'm just going to do at center. Um, that should give us some minimal distortion. Some of these sections might be slightly stretched or slightly um, compressed, but chances are you won't even notice 
on the texture because those distortions are going to be so small. Uh, let's select faces. There we go. Now, if you're doing something bigger, you want this to be more exact, you might want to... That was strange. Oh, that's why. Okay. Well, I guess in that case, we're going to have to move this here and here. So because there's something else over here that's technically connected at those same points, I'm going to have to turn that off and just select the things I want to work with over here. So we're going to select just these faces uh, so I can get them attached in sequence properly. Now I should be able to just select here and here and merge, and that should be fine. Make sure that's good. Now I can flip that back on and you'll see it did not pull from over here like it did previously. So that's sort of the big chunks of this model. So I'm going to arrange this so that everything is sort of proportional and takes up as much space as possible on my UV map. So this stuff can be a little bit bigger. And then these I'm going to have to split up into two. So my top half that I've actually properly adjusted, I'm going to split off. And that will be a little bit bigger. And then we'll grab this. We'll come back to that in a moment. Might actually have to split this into more because this should be close to that size. Yeah, we'll go with that. So when you're doing a manual UV, because you're doing manual textures, you want things to be as close to the same proportion as you can. So this is sort of what we can manage with these things. And again, I would make these the proper size, but we're just not going to worry about it for the moment. Or we would connect them, I mean. I'm just going to scale them down a little bit so they fit. There we go. Um... So because this is out of proportion with this, I'm actually going to scale this chunk down a little bit to make sure that everything is going to work out right. Because if I use the same texture, if I want sort of the same color or whatever um, for those sections of the thing, I want to make sure that I'm not uh, causing a major noticeable distortion with them. So that's going to have to be about like that to fit. Let's see if I can maybe scale that up just a little bit more. We'll try this. All right. That might not be perfect, but I think it'll be good enough. Let's get this a little bit bigger. Well, that part smaller, but the whole thing bigger. Uh, yeah, those are the same size. Good. All right. And then these are going to be a different texture, so if they're slightly bigger or something, that's fine. Um, if I wanted them to be perfectly proportional, I'd probably scale them down a little bit. But all I'm going to do for now is move them. Okay, we'll call that good for our layout. We're not going to worry about this, because this is all these sort of little tiny chunks, like the edge right here, these little edges along here. Um, when, I, when I do those, if I was doing it manually, I would just fit them in into these little spaces. So up here, over here, down here, along the bottom, um, I just fill in those spaces with all my little tiny like edges. And there actually aren't that too many on this model. It's just sort of along here and on the inside of the magazine. So this is a relatively simple UV. This is one that would not be too hard to do manually. Um, if you're doing something like the receiver, which is going to have all kinds of extra little round parts and little details like that, um, that might be a little bit more of a pain. Now, 
I'm going to jump real quick and I'm going to show you how to do a round thing. I'm just going to use the barrel because it's nice and simple. Um, but there are some sort of extra things that you want to look at if you're unwrapping uh, a round section manually. Um, because you want to make sure that it fits on the UV map in a way that is usable. So let's switch out of here. Let's take a look at the barrel. Uh, I'll pull it down where we can see it. So there's a couple different things you can do when you uh, unwrap this. Now I'm going to show you what happens if I auto unwrap first and we're going to apply this again. Maybe. There we go. So if I auto unwrap, you'll see what I get. Now this is okay for certain parts, right? This is great for my little rims at the end here. This is sort of exactly what I want for that. Okay, so I'm going to keep that. I'm going to keep my circle in the middle. Oh, don't want to move it in there. I want to move it here. Um, this is great for this part. Okay, so I'm going to keep those. Now here's where you kind of run into an issue, though. This is my barrel. Now, if I was using Substance Painter, that would probably turn out fine, because Substance Painter sort of recognizes the proportions, recognizes what you're actually trying to do, um, and it distorts the texture itself to fit your UV, as long as the UV isn't too messy. But if I'm doing it manually, that is going to be a huge pain. I'm going to have to distort my texture in a circle. It's not worth it. So what I'm going to do instead is similar to what I've done before um, with the project from view. The first thing I'm going to do is make sure that if I look at this head on, I want to make sure that this point, that the top and bottom come to points rather than being flat across. In this case, that is um, kind of something you have to pre-plan ahead of time as you're doing your modeling to make sure that your round sections turn out like this. If they're not, there is another way to do it um, where I could look at it from the side, which I'm going to be looking at from the side anyway. Um, but I can rotate that view a little bit until I can actually see uh, points at each side. So like this would work okay. Uh, if I did not have those points at top and bottom. But since I do, I can just start from this, and we will unwrap from Project From View. Okay? Now, all I need to do from here is scale the top and bottom. Maybe. We'll move this out of the way. We'll scale it down to here. But I'm going to scale on Y, or on X, sorry, on the X axis. So I'm going to stretch it out this way. So it's turning my, uh, my round object into a flat rectangle for when I do my texturing. And then I'm going to stretch out these edges just a little bit more so that I have each section, each of these um, faces on here, roughly the same size. So I'm going to scale that one up a little bit. And then I'm going to do just the outer edge. Right there. Until all of those sections are close to the same size. Now what this will do is you're going to have sort of a mirror image on each half of your um, of your round object. Um, so there will be sort of a seam, um, but it's not going to be like, like a cut type seam. It's going to be a mirror seam where you can see that the texture starts repeating in the opposite direction. Um, so one thing you might want to do since we're looking at top and bottom like that, is just rotate this model so that that is out of view. So I would go in here and I would rotate it sort of diagonally so that those seams are away from the player's view. There we go. So now this seam is going to be down on the bottom. 
on the left side and up at the top on the right side. And as the player is looking down the side of the weapon, both of those seams will be out of view. So as you are working on the round sections, if you're doing manual unwrap because you're doing manual textures, this is what you're going to want to do. All right, let's jump back to that magazine. We're going to export it into an image that we can use in GIMP, and we'll get started on that GIMP side of things. I don't know why I'm about to just close everything. That's <laughs> not what we need to do yet. Let's go to this. So over here we have our layout, or at least as much of it as we're going to use. I'm just going to go down to UV, export UV layout. Um, this is the folder where all the stuff is. All these other images are my references for building the weapon in the first place. If we're going to make sure we have all UVs ticked, I'm going to set this to 2048, since that's the size that our texture is going to be. And I'm going to drag the fill opacity all the way down to zero because we don't need anything filling in those faces. All we need is the outlines. <clears throat> so we'll change the name here. I'm just going to go Big Box Mag. And I like to do original just in case I have to change things and export new versions. I kind of have them separated. So we'll do that. And we'll see you in GIMP in just a moment. So over here in GIMP, I have our UV layout imported. Um, and you can see that it just has the lines, otherwise it's transparent. And that'll help sort of guide us through where to put our details um, to make sure they show up on our object correctly. Uh, now, if you have experience with video, or sorry, not video, with image editing, um, you could do this in Photoshop as well. That would work fine. Um, I know a lot of people use paint.net because it has uh, the export settings that we need by default. With GIMP here, you have to have a plugin, which I'll include in the description down below. Um, so whatever program you're using, whatever process you're familiar with, go ahead and use that. Do, do what you know. Uh, but I'm just going to give some sort of the basic tips, some of the workflow that I use uh, in order to do this. Um, if you know what you're doing with an image editor, this is basically what you need to know. You need to get to this point, and then you edit it, and then you can sort of skip to the end where I talk about export settings. Um, if you're doing this for the first time, then you might want to follow along and sort of watch the basics as I run through them. Now, if you know what you're doing to sort of generate a texture that looks the way you want by using filters and stuff like that, go ahead and do that for your background. What I do, uh, I use photographs or pre-generated textures. Most of mine come from textures.com, which is another thing that I will link down in the description. Um, but I use those as my background to build the basis of my textures. So in this case, I have quite a large library built, and I'm gonna use sort of a military green color for this magazine. So I'm gonna use this image that I got from textures.com which is off of a military aircraft. So it's got that sort of olive green color that I want. It's metallic. Um, this will work fine for the section that we're going to cover. I'm not going to do the entire texture here, but I'm going to show you the basics on one part of it. So this is a little bit small. I'm going to scale it up because I kind of want this, this center section right here that looks like it's been uh, brushed off and worn in the middle. So let's scale this up around there. Rotate 90, and we'll position this underneath this layer, underneath my layer of lines, so I can see exactly where I'm putting it. And I want this to be that big box front and back. So that looks about right, actually. I fortunately scaled it properly the first time, which is excellent. And yeah, we'll go there. Uh, so what I like to do is actually trim this off. You don't have to, uh, especially if it's your bottom layer because everything else is going to overlap it. Uh, but I like to trim it so it is just the section that I'm actually working with. So I'm going to do select 
invert, and I'm just going to erase everything. And you'll notice my erase is being weird because I have a jitter applied. That's something that's going to come into play a little bit later. Um, we don't actually need it for the deletion right now. All right, so I'm going to select none. There we go. Now, what I like to do at this point is create a dodge layer. So I'm going to do a new layer. I'm going to call it dodge. I'm going to set it to dodge. And then I'm going to use the paintbrush with a little bit of fade out on my brush. I'm going to set jitter to oh, somewhere between 1 and 1 1.5. We'll do 1.4 for this particular object. And I'm going to zoom way in here. Maybe. There it goes. Now here's what I'm doing. I'm going to make some wear along the edges of this texture. And the way I'm going to do that is by using a gray color and setting my, my brush to around 3 to 6. And just going along the edges here. Now with, I want that overlap a little bit more. With the jitter, this will make it look like there's some uneven wear along the edges. And I can do it manually like this by just dragging the mouse. And that will give me a little bit of a thicker effect. But it's much, much faster um, if I click and drag holding shift. So I'm going to click here, hold shift, and then go down. And it's just going to fill in that entire line for me. So I'm just going to go around the edges here. We'll speed this up just a little bit until I'm done. And there we go. So I've gone all the way around the outside. Um, and I'm realizing now with this UV map, there is another large box that I might want to have separated, so I can do that along that as well. But I'm just not going to worry about it right now. Um, we'll just go along the outside and go with that for the moment. The thing that you want to, the, the reason we're doing this particular detail is to break up all those edges where your mismatched textures are going to meet. So because your textures are unlikely to flow smoothly around an edge, we want to mask that edge by making it look like it's worn off by making that a uniform color. So this brings those colors close to uniform by just brightening the texture underneath. So when I do this same color along the side, which I'll, I'll do a section of it so you can kind of see where they match up when we get back into Blender, um, it will be a little less obvious that those are two different textures. It will just look like something has sort of grinded along the edge there and worn off a little bit. Um, it'll make our texture a little bit more believable. Um, so I'm going to reuse some of this for one of these side sections here so that we can see kind of what I'm talking about when we get back in there. For this, I'm just going to copy and paste this same texture. Um, I'm terrible, I tend to not organize my layers at all. Um, if you are a more organized person, that is something that you may want to do. So let's, we're gonna delete some stuff because I didn't actually get everything. So we don't have any weird overlapping. And that was a little too much. Try to be more careful here. That should be good enough. So we're going to go back to our dodge. I'm going to go around just the long edges of these so that you can see when we get in to Blender again what's happening with uh, those edges. So let's go back down. I think I had it set for five. So we'll just go from here to here and then back up. And we'll also do one here. 
Now the other thing that I can do is if I'm at sort of an interior fold, so like the inside of this section right here, which would be where I connected up here. So let's go ahead, we're, we're gonna copy and paste this one more time. I'm gonna put it underneath after we move it. And I'll actually show you a couple of things here. So one um, is going to be the way that I blend textures together. As you can see, this blends pretty good because it's the same texture, it's the same colors, um, but there's a little bit of a line there. Uh, what I like to do to sort of reduce that is take this really soft brush on the um, eraser, make it big, and then just go sort of unevenly along that seam, and that really helps blend those two together. If I go too high, of course, I end up hitting the seam, so we got to be careful about that. But now those sort of blend together, and I have one continuous texture. So, oh, yep, I have more stuff down there that didn't get erased. Get rid of that. But then the two that I sort of blended together here, these two layers, I'm just going to merge them into one thing. So now at the top here, we'll do what I was talking about. I'm going to add another layer, and this one's going to be a burn layer. So mode is going to be burn. I'll just call it burn, maybe. There we go. Now, where dodge makes things lighter, burn is going to make things darker, and it's still going to be color-based. Now, I'm going for the idea that in the sort of interior um, crevices, there's going to be some buildup of dirt and grime. There's also a shadow there. Um, so I'm going to do something a little bit darker. I'm going to give it sort of a brownish color. Now, if you use a dark color when you're burning, it's going to make it like nearly black. And we don't want that. So I'm going to use these sort of lighter browns, these two right here. I'm going to do a dual layer on my burn. So I'm going to go to my brush, set it back to the same thing that I was using for painting. So same settings, um, same size. Uh, but I am going to, and when I do my second layer of this, I'm going to reduce my size. So we'll start at 5. And this is just going to go right along here, just like I was doing with the dodge. Okay, so it gives a nice sort of puke brown grimy color. I'm going to go back and use a slightly darker one and go over that same thing again. And you might have to change these colors based on what they're going over top of. But now I have this <coughs> uh, sort of mix of colors. And then if I go over to my opacity and pull that down a little bit, I can adjust it to a point where it looks less sort of obvious, doesn't stand out quite as much, um, and blends in a little bit more with that background color. So I'm just going to leave it there for now. Um, using some different colors or a different jitter um, might give you something that looks closer to what you want, but I think this is a good start. We're going to export this now, and then we'll load it back up in Blender and we'll take a look at it. So. For those of you who sort of skipped past those basics that already knew what you were doing, um, here's your export settings. Uh, we're going to hide that layer. And I don't know why every time I hide that, it gets rid of my burn layer. There we go. Okay. Make sure that doesn't disappear. Uh, We'll bring that back down to 70 something. Okay. So we want to hide our outline, and then we're going to have to merge all these layers um, because when it exports as DDS, our required format to get it in Fallout 4, um, it will only export one layer uh, onto the image. So we need our entire texture to be flattened. So I'm just going to go to image, flatten image. That will work just fine. Uh, you'll see that anything I didn't have done that was transparency is going to show up as white. Um, 
if you do want transparency, there's some extra steps that you need to do that I'm not going to go over right now. Um, but basically, you would have to flatten by just going merge down, merge down, um, possibly in sections. Um, but for now, we're not worried about transparency. We're just going to get this image working. So I'm going to go to export as. Um, and we want to, because this is our diffuse, we're just going to call it diffuse or sorry, underscore D is what we normally use for that. Uh, and then we're going to go DDS. So I'm going to set it to BC3 DXT5. Um, you want to use this for your diffuse. When we get over to normals and speculars, you can use BC4, BC5. BC5 is really what I would recommend for those two. They're a little higher quality. If you are using paint.net, which I mentioned earlier, um, I haven't tried it myself, but apparently it has uh, the newer uh, ex the newer export settings, uh, which I think you want to use BC7 for your highest quality, and you can use, use that for all of your different types of textures. For our diffuse, we're going to use BC3. Make sure you have generate MIP maps turned on, and then we should be good to go. So we'll jump back to Blender here, and we'll take a look at it within Blender. So if I go right back to where I was here, uh, we're going to get that image set up so that we can see it on our object here in Blender, uh, just so you can preview it without having to get it in the game. Now in this case, all you need to do to load in that texture to have Blender recognize it is go to Image and Open, and then I just got to find it somewhere down here. There was an underscore D, there it is. Now you'll notice that this looks a little bit darker than what we actually made. So I'm going to go up to image here and instead of color space sRGB I'm going to set it to raw and that should look just like it was in GIMP or whatever program you used. <coughs> now to get it to appear on our object itself I'm just going to go to object mode now I have to set my view here um, I use viewport shading and then leave all these basically the same and I'm going to set it to texture. Now you'll notice that that didn't actually do anything because I haven't set up a texture. So I'm going to go down here to our materials, I'm going to make a new one, click new, and then down here where it says base color, I'm going to choose image texture. Now it will give me the option to open that. So I'm just going to open the same one that I did for our UV over there, and now it should be showing up. Okay. So now we have that nice green color. You can see some of our pitting that's from the texture, and you can see along the edges we have that little bit of wear and tear. And if we look on the side here, you'll note up here there's sort of this really obvious cutoff from the texture. But along the edge here, since we have that on both sides, it helps mask that a little bit, makes it look like it's worn around both edges. And if I remove my cavity, that can show up a little bit better. So cut off both sides. You'll see there are certain points where the uh, regular texture didn't get masked by the, um, by the dodge all the way to the corner. So if you want to go back and make sure that there aren't any of those at the corner, at the edge, that will mask that a little bit better. And then we can look on the interior over here. And we've got that little bit of dirt. Oh, I switched around that UV. We've got that little bit of dirt along the edges here that would combine if I had it flipped the right direction, which actually is not a hard thing to fix. We can just go here. That's this thing that's flipped around. So I'm literally just going to go rotate 180. And now it's matched up how we want. So we have a little bit of dirt and grime in the corner there. You can sort of spread that out a little bit, use some different colors, some different patterns. But that's the basic idea is to have that interior angles be a little bit darker to show um, both the shadow and that sort of grime. Uh, that's pretty much it.
So from here, the next step is going to be building a normal map, which is sort of the height map that lets you see details um, or makes details appear a little bit more 3D. Um, that'll be the next tutorial. Um, but as far as your just your flat colors, what we call the diffuse map, that's really all you need to know. So you would just go back into GIMP, finish out um, all those little details, um, probably finish unwrapping this um, if there were some pieces that you left out the first time and fill in those little gaps. So um, good luck with that. Use what you already know. Uh, this is sort of my basic process that you saw in GIMP. Um, but for some people, the important parts are just going to be the export settings. Um, this is really for mostly for beginners. So if you're starting from scratch and you have some more questions, um, please let me know down in the comments. Um, if there are any resources that you need that I failed to mention um, or failed to link, please let me know and I can add those in the description as well. Uh, good luck. Have fun building your textures.